case, I take a coffee can lid, a four inch lid, and a magic marker, and I and I find the approximate center of the log, set it down, and mark it. That's step one. You got to back up one picture. The first one in your group. There. That's step two. So you stand that block up, set your chainsaw right by the magic marker ring, and cut down to the outside of the log and make a comb. You're, you're cutting off four wedges first and then take the corners off. So it's eight sided. Um, you get a bunch of wedges, thick ones, makes nice little projects. So that's step two. That's step three. Put it on the lathe between centers and uh, turn, it, turn away the chainsaw marks towards true. So Keep why going. Did, why did you take it all eight side? Just to go right to here. It just takes less time to turn if you cut it all off of the chainsaw first. So that's step three, would be to define the outside shape and to turn a chuck tenon on the top of the shade up here. Make it chuck, something for the chuck to grab, go ahead. Then I true up the back side while it's between centers. Next. Now I've got it in the chuck, and the first thing I do is hollow the first one inch. And I have a strong light, and it should be flexible with your finger. You should be able to move it. And you can mic it if you want. Uh, this one's 20 thousandths of an inch. That one's 10 thousandths of an inch. And I like 10 better. The light shines through better. This one doesn't measure. It doesn't measure. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, next one. Okay, there's the next inch, hollowing. And you're just doing it by color, by light transmission. So, so over there, so you, you, you take... you can only right do there. one well, inch at a time. Where you actually start your gouge and how you, where you're actually it's showing flexible. at this point. Okay, so I, go back. I did no, this I'm, inch I'm first, them, yeah. I did it with him and then I did this inch. Yeah. And this is probably a quarter inch thick where it's this brown color. It has to go down thinner. And then you, and you start inside. So then, so then I'm going to cut from here to here and bring this next inch down until yeah. it looks like By that. pulling and going back. I'm, I'm cutting toward myself with the gouge. And one, uh, one thing I discovered is on the gouge itself, these are the two sides of the gouge, and uh, this is the tip of the gouge, okay? I'm doing my cutting between here and here. I'm going to call that 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock would be straight up, so between 11 and about 9, 30, 10. If I start cutting over here, it's too much drag and it breaks. It, it's taken too big a shaving because there's too much cutting edge touching. So to, to be able to do that, if this is the lampshade spinning, if you get the tool like that, you're going to be using this part of the tool right here. But if you turn the handle over here, then you can rub right there. And the tool, when I first put it in there, I have the flute straight up. And I rotate it over, I turn it counterclockwise, the handle, until it starts cutting right there. Because then the oncoming wood fibers that are turning down, the cutting edge is at an angle. So I'm getting a shear, I'm getting the curly shavings coming off. That's important. I'm not just scraping. Yes. I'm shear scraping. Right. That's important. And I'm actually not scraping. I'm actually cutting, rubbing the belt. So if you get the tool handle in the right position and you roll the tool just right, you pull it toward you on a real fine cut, it's amazing how thin you can get that. But you'll get to a certain point where the wood moves away from you when you try to cut it. It's that inch turn. And you're going to get to a certain point where the tool rest might not go all the way in there, so you're hanging further off the rest. And when you get to that point, you might want to change to a scraper instead of a gouge. And you might want to turn that scraper at a bit of an angle so it's shear scraping for a negative and, and not peeling for you know regular scrape. So so that brown heartwood, the other thing you run into with the brown heartwood is it transmits light differently than the white wood. So to get the same amount of light coming through the dark wood, the dark wood's thinner than you think it is. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to run your fingers on the inside and check thickness or caliper or however you want. But when you get into the brown wood, you're going to find out that you're thinner than you think you are to get light transmission. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm squirting the whole piece with a spray bottle to keep it soft and wet. I do not want it drying out and changing shape as I'm working on it. 
I and a good seen. tip is afterwards to make sure you dry everything off because we rusted. Get a little rust on the way. Yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> I knew. I knew it was going to be. Okay, is there yeah. another one, Sam, or is that it? I have a scene. Yeah, there's that what the lady. Your fingers are can be your best eye. Yeah. You just feel the wall thickness. You can tell. Uh, that's the final piece, and you can see the brown heartwood. Now, this one of them. Now, I did my living room floor in oak, and these are some of the pieces of oak flooring left over. So if you can imagine this being a circle of all these shorts glued together, that's what I used to make these bases. Mm -hmm. And all you're after is something heavy so the lamp doesn't tip over. And then I drill a round hole through the base. I, I take a hole saw and cut into the bottom of the wishbone to make a round tenon and just saw the shoulders so it bottoms out when it goes in there. And I drive a couple walnut wedges in to expand it with glue. Mm -hmm. And I made a place for the two wires to go into a box and then that goes to the plug-in to the wall. And up on the top of these, you screw the lamp sockets that have pull chains to turn them on. So this whole thing will get you know, a polyurethane or something. And I really like these. I think they're really pretty in the corner of the house. And this hasn't been sanded yet. This is just hand peeled. I did take a grinder and knock down some of the knots. It's kind of rough, but I've got five of these going right now. So what are these? So I need ten lampshades. I got six turned now, so I think I'll make it. So when you're when you're all done, what's it sell for? About twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred, huh? The gallery takes 30% in Marquette. It takes 50% in Cross Village. I don't know what the rest of them, there's some in Point City. 35 to 50. Yeah, 30. Most of them have gone to 50%. Yeah, most 40, are. At least 40. So the problem is, if I try to sell this thing for three grand, it might sit there and not sell. Just so I get 15 and the gallery gets 15. That's the problem. You're better off selling direct to the customer if you can. Uh, but these things sell well. They they look great when they're lit, and they're just a nice thing in the corner of the house, you know. So anyway, uh, Sammy, let no, that thing rip. I gotta wait. Oh. <laughs>